start with the animation. Uh, okay, so I'm talk talking about this emulation of another kind of machine. We heard about the Commodore 64. So this is a much older machine. This came from uh, Alan Turing's work uh, before the World War. So uh, his work after the war was, I mean, during the war was, was relatively well known. Um, but he did major important work before the war as well. Uh, in fact, he was looking at um, this issue of uh, what, what is a computer, actually. And uh, he's sort of the first person to give a definition of a, of a computer or a machine that uh, is able to solve all information processing problems. So before that, uh, we did not know, you know what is this, uh, this all-powerful computer, right? So here I'm just showing you an example from his, uh, from his publication, 1936 paper. Highly recommended that you check it out. It's actually quite readable, despite its age. Um, so at the top, uh, the few lines beginning with B is the, is the uh, machine table, and, and the bottom is sort of the animation part. Uh, so let me talk about the, the, what, what it does first. What it does is it prints on the tape. Right? So the Turing machine actually is a very interesting story. Uh, he, was, he was inspired by his mother's typewriter. So in physics, we have the story of, uh, I think, Newton and the apple. So I think in computer science, we have the story of Turing and his mother's typewriter. So the typewriter, or this is a printer, has a kind of a print head, right? And the print head moves along a piece of paper. So in this case, he says, you don't need the paper to move up and down. We just have an infinitely long paper. So you can just move left and right uh, as far as you want. Okay? So the print head is represented by this uh, little uh, v, v shape at the right of the, this is the tape, and then the V is the position of the, the head, the print head. And then the interesting part is really how is the, the logic, right? How does the head know what operations to perform? So the head can print a character on the tape. Uh, it can print a new character and sort of overwrite the old one. Or it can also move left and right. Then that's all it does, really. It's a very simple machine. Okay, let's look at how the logic is implemented. So this machine, as you can see, um, prints uh, the infinite string 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and forever. So this is the logic of the, the first three lines is the logic of the machine. Okay, so it's, it's written in, in, a, in a block of four, um, four parts. Each line has four parts. The first part is called the, um, the state of the machine. So in this case, the state is, there's only one state, it's called B. The second part is called the um, symbol on the tape. So the second part represents um, what symbol the tape is currently. So if it was um, on, you know, if it was on the zero, then it will execute line uh, one. If it was on the one, it will execute line two. The tilde just represents a blank, means nothing was on the tape. It, it was a tilde on the tape at the point of execution, it will execute the third line. Okay? And then the, the block in the middle represents the operation on the, the, the head. Right? So R just means move the head to the right. A comma just separates the multiple operations. Then P1 means print the symbol 1 on the tape. And then print P0 means print the symbol 0. And the last part, the fourth part of the program says, um, after this state and doing this action, go to this new state. But in, in this very simple program, there's only one state, so state B goes to state B. So there's, there's no new states to introduce. So okay, so if you run this program, you can you sort of imagine what it does. So you start with the, initially the tape will be empty, so it will be the last line, right? And, it, and then you go to, you print a zero, right? So after printing a zero, you will now see, oh, now the tape is zero, so now I must execute line one. Line one says move right twice and print a one, then go to state B. So when you move right twice, you encounter a, sorry, oh, anyway, anyway, goes too far. Let me just, if you move right twice and you print a one, then you go back to state B, then, then now you're on the one, you will move right twice and print a zero, and so on. Oh, sorry. But anyway, uh, if you trace it through, like, this is what, what it does. So I'm just going to show you some other things. Uh, so this is how it works. So it's, it has a particular state. It looks at what's on the tape, and then it performs the actions. Then it goes to a new state. Right? So not exactly what the program looks like. It's not so important, actually. Uh, so let's look at another program. Uh, one, zero, one. So more common, more modern use of the machine is actually to recognize um, so this is a different take on the machine. So this, this particular machine is slightly different. It recognizes uh, strings of the form 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, well, you can have as many copies of 0, 1. So 0, 1 star, right, if you write regular expressions. Uh, so what it does is it will 
you will go through and then if everything is okay, it will print a one at the end to say that, oh, this is correct. This is of the form 0101. So you could have like 20 copies of 01. Right. But if it's something else, then you will sort of quit halfway and say, oh, I give up because uh, you're not what I'm looking for. So this particular machine will recognize um, the string 0101. And no matter repeated how many copies, it will be able to recognize it. And if you study the program, it's actually quite simple, right? You would imagine how you would do it yourself. Okay. I'm done? Ah, all right. <laughs> That's good. But uh, yeah, opening the floor for questions. Um, yes. Can you, can you show me the source of one of these programs? Yeah, it's just on top. Oh, that's the source. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, okay, I just, I wasn't sure. What is the source of the TM? Sorry? The TM. Oh, it's uh, C++. Oh, okay. You see, I mean... How, how many lines or uh, how much C++ is it? No, 200 lines of C++. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's C++, it's just, yeah. Okay. Other questions? Will this be made available online? Yes, this is already online. Yeah, yeah. I will place a link on the, perhaps in the Facebook. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, as in, so people can interact with it online. Yeah. Ah, a web page. no. <laughs> <laughs> you can download it and compile it. And then so I think about it in JavaScript and do that. <laughs> there is a JavaScript version, actually. Um, yeah. okay. But I prefer to use it off. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? For this particular case, how do you store the initial screen? Ah, so I, I, I sort of had this thing where I, I stick the, the actual beginning of the tape on the end of the program. It's a bit of a... Oh, okay. Well, I see. You, can, you can put it separately, actually. Uh, but, yeah. Yes? Um, what do you... Um, do you like have you, have you uh, use this to teach computation training? Or is it is it a curiosity? Uh, I did talk about I, I did have a large longer talk that talked about more on the, the the really interesting idea of what you can build with this. There's actually much more interesting programs you can build with such machines. Can you can you yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so one of the <laughs> I still have time. So one one of the more interesting programs that, well, Alan Turing built, like, okay, I wouldn't say I, I didn't build any of these. Alan Turing built, it's only called um, the Universal Machine, actually, I was going to talk about that, but thanks for the question. Uh, uh, the Universal Machine is actually not very complicated. I mean, it's, it's longer, of course. Uh, it has like uh, 39 states and something like, uh, something like um, 181 lines. So why is this, uh, this machine, this machine table, you think of it like the, like the hardware, like the circuitry. Like this machine table, think of it as hard coded. That's, that's, that, that was the intention, right? But um, so String Link, it's a very great discovery that actually we don't need so many different machines. We only need to build one machine. And that one machine will be able to emulate all other machines possible. So uh, that's why we have CPUs, right? CPU actually is only one particular instruction set and one particular machine, but it can do everything, right? This idea actually originated with, uh, with, with Alan Turing. So let me just show you the example instead of talking so much. Uh, so let's run just now the example of checking whether something is a zero one or not, right? But we use the, the really interesting thing that, that uh, Turing said was, let's put the program, this machine table, states and whatever, put it onto the tape. So let's see what it looks like. Oh, it runs uh, really fast and you can't see. It still runs really fast. I guess it's, uh, I have a problem with the resolution on, okay, maybe this is better. So now it's more complicated. So you have this bunch of things at the beginning of all the C's, and then you, have, you see some at the bottom, you have this zero 01, something like zero 0101. Zero one. So now the, that three line program is this chunk of the tape at the beginning. So now this machine will, will execute this other machine described by the tape, which we recognize today actually is what we call software, right? Because software is something we put on, a, not a tape, but a, like, a, like a hard disk. And then the CPU loads that and pretends to be that machine, right, which this software describes. And this is really the first instance we see this being mentioned uh, in, in the literature. This idea that you can take a machine description and put it onto tape, put it onto storage. Uh, today we call this the von Neumann architecture, but really it's the Alan Turing architecture, if I may say so, yeah. So this is an example of a much more complicated program. This program reads the tape and follows the behavior of the description of the tape, uh, of the machine on the tape. Yeah. Just to check, so the tape is another language, and then the universal machine is actually a virtual machine. The tape is just like the, the, the memory, like the, 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 the input output, basically, also the same thing. 
it's the it's the paper in the printer basically, right? Uh, yeah. Where is the program stuff? So the program we put it onto the tape. So let me show you the tape actually. So the tape looks like ah uh, okay yeah, but this is one tape I just break it over a few lines so that you can see what's happening. So the program is this CC followed by blah 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 and then C zero and then we have this triple C to say okay the rest of it is the data the actual data for the thing on the tape. But all this is on the tape actually. It's like all this is on your it's just like on the hard disk we have input files and we have program right. They 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 lie on the same disk. So there's actually no separation between them essentially except we say this is one program file this is a input file. Yeah. So the Turing. The universal Turing machine has yeah. the information on how to execute the tape program yeah. and the language in which it's kind of written. It ha yeah, it decodes the tape and uh, knows how to change the state and so on. I mean, yeah, it's really interesting. Cool. Uh, we are at time. All right. Good. Again, that's all this time. Thank you.